This is the pet porpoise pool in Coffs Harbour, under the care of scientist Scott Taylor, who has been studying the intellectual ability of dolphins for more than 20 years. This is the first time Nat and I will have swum with dolphins in a controlled environment. We're going to be visitors on the dolphin's turf and we need to know the etiquette. How should we behave around the dolphins? Well, the dolphins, um, like most animals, they're particularly uh, attuned to attitude. So the inner attitude that you have about them, if you appreciate them, if you respect them, if you take a sensitive approach to them, they will know that immediately. We're entering into their home. They're, they're letting us come into their living room, or really their world in this case. Um, so it's about, it's kind of like being a guest in a stranger's home. So what kind of behavior will we expect to see? Well, uh, they will have some curiosity about us. Um, they will be um, a bit wary um, because they're not sure exactly what we're there for. Buck, the oldest dolphin here, will tend to take a lead role. Um, the other two will be following him. They may come around and sort of kind of zoom past and give us a quick once over and then go off to the other end of the pool. They're actually able to look inside our bodies so they can see, you know, how excited you are. Um, if, you're, if you're quite calm, that's going to be very interesting to them because most people are very excited. Mm. Now you're interested in interspecies communication. Mm. How can we go about communicating with these dolphins? Well, a lot of it will be body language. That's going to be the first thing. Um, they want to see whether or not you're any kind of a threat to them. One of the strongest signals that a dolphin will give is if they form themselves into an S shape and pause there for an instant. They're saying, "This is my place. You, you know, beware. This is my. This is where I'm going to. I'm going to assert myself." These dolphins particularly are likely to come up and uh, open their mouth in front of you. Um, that's not a threat behavior. That's more of a, mm, they're sort of testing you. They're gonna actually are watching your heart rate. So they will see how excited you get, whether or not you get really startled. Um, your startle response will help them to know how calm you are and how much they can explore with you. There's been some talk that dolphins are actually telepathic. That's a big question. Um, it's been very clearly demonstrated that dolphins will understand what it is you intend to do or what we, you would like them to do well before you've even fully formed the thought in your own mind. Now, is that telepathy? Is there some kind of uh, intuition operating? Uh, we don't really know. seem to have accepted Daniel and Natalie into their home. But was there any interspecies communication as they'd hoped? 
Was there a mind meld between humans and dolphins? Really incredible. They seemed uh, particularly interested in you. I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> it took a while for them to 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 get their confidence in mm. us, but mm. then all of a sudden the male came up, and I didn't know what he was going to do. He, st he was just there in front of in front of my mask and then he comes up and he taps it yeah. and then swims away and I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> and then he let me scratch him under the chin. So do you think he was trying to communicate to me to tell me that I know you're a female yes. and I trust you more than these guys? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think so, and, and certainly he uh, uh, he showed his trust and, and how um, how comfortable he felt with you. So the squeaks and whistles that were happening, were they communicating between themselves or were they looking at us and inside us? That would be a combination. Um, the, the clicking sounds, uh, the very, very high-pitched stuff, um, that's what they're using to look deeply into us. A lot of the whistling kind of sounds, um, those, that's a whole different form of communication, and that's going to be more what's the, what they're in, exchanging between themselves. I noticed at the end I started making some squeaking and clicking noises back, and, and that's when... Uh, they started paying more attention to me, I found it's like making some strange noises back towards them and that's when they'll come up and, and check you out. So. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they're, they find um, human sounds to really not be very sophisticated. Mm. So as soon as you start being playful, that's why I think they really enjoy swimming with children because mm. children sort of have no boundaries. They'll go anywhere. They'll explore anything that they, you know. And, of course, children always get very excited and make all kinds of squealing sounds. <laughs>